play it on Xbox One. Welcome to another edition of Forza Monthly. It's the November edition. Welcome, everyone. We're so glad to have you here with Forza Monthly. It's November. The November update is coming tomorrow, and we're going to go deep into that for Forza Motorsport 7. We have a jam-packed show along with a bunch of guests that you've never seen before, some familiar faces. It's going to be a fantastic show. My name is Brian Eckberg. So happy that you're here with us for the November edition of Forza Monthly because we've got a big show. Before we get to introducing you to everything we're going to do to let's introduce our special guest from Turn 10, starting with a familiar face, Chris Asagi. Hey, Chris. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, Brian? It's great to have you back. It's great to be back, as always. I seem to be becoming a permanent resident here. Love that. Feels like home. And we feels have like a great, home. we have some cool stuff to talk about today. Uh, yeah, this, uh, it's a little bit of fun, a, a little bit of serious. Uh, it's, it's all good. A little bit of everything. Yeah. Uh, to my right, Carrie Gaynor, welcome to the show for Hi. the first time. Thanks for having now, me. Now, we've streamed together before. We have. But this is the first time you've been on Forza Monthly, so welcome to the show. Thank you. You uh, work in UX with Turn 10. What does that mean? What do you do with Turn 10? I do. Um, um, so it means I primarily work with the UI and the information architecture, also flows, and it means that I work with Chris and Jen a lot on your wonderful features that you're going to see. Well, that's fantastic. And, and Jen is, uh, sorry, Carrie is going to be taking us through uh, the new race shop feature that we, uh, you guys knew this was coming. You're going to see it for the very first time today. Last but not least, of course, Jen Lane is here. Jen, a design director Hi, with Turn 10. Also, this is uh, your second appearance? I think this is my second, but I've heard I have to show up more often. You've got to so. show up. We love having you here. So love again, here. For, for those who don't know you, what do you do? Um, uh, I am a design director at Turn 10 Studios and uh, primarily working on the motorsport, We're working very closely with Chris and also working with Carrie and my team. Um, some of the things that they do that you guys see every month is we make the events that are alive. So anything that's a Forzathon or a specialty dealer or a hopper and all those things my team puts together. All the rivals. All the rivals. All the, yeah. all the fun Everything. stuff we do on a regular basis. Yes. That's Jen's team. Well, thanks. We're, welcome, guys. Uh, let me give you a, a, a rundown of the kind of stuff we've got going on because this is a busy show today, guys. We have a lot of Forza news to get to, some stuff you haven't heard, some stuff you have heard. Let's bring up the schedule and take you through it because there's a lot going on. Uh, we're going to start with Forza Motorsport 7. Uh, uh, we have a brand new spotlight car that we're going to kick things off with. You saw the announcement last week about Hot Wheels coming into Forza Motorsport 7. We're going to take a look at some of those cars. Jen's got a lot to say about the Hot Wheels events that are coming into the game. We've got some contests and good stuff there. Uh, we are, like I mentioned, uh, you remember a few weeks ago, a few months ago, we mentioned that prize crates were coming out of Forza Motorsport 7. That happens tomorrow. In place of that is Race Shop. Carrie's here to give us a tour of the new Race Shop feature. Chris and I are going to be talking about the Forza Fundamentals, new collision model that is coming into the game. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be changing gears and looking back at the 2018 Forza RC season. We've got some very special guests who have been with us the entire way. We had a fantastic wrap-up two weeks ago in London. We're going to look back at that season. John, John Iwana and co-pilot were at SEMA just a few days ago. We had a live stream from SEMA, and they filmed some really fun stuff behind the scenes at the big show in Las Vegas. We've got that, of course. And then Forza Horizon 4. For the very first time, we've got a guest from Playground Games here. So happy to have them here. We're going to dive deep into Forza Horizon 4, looking at Series 2, and looking ahead at some of the stuff that's yet to come in Forza Horizon 4, so, so much to get to. Guys, it's gonna be an awesome show. I, I, I'm really looking forward to it. So, uh, let's start, Chris. Let's start with a, with, let's start with a race car. All right, uh, race cars. <laughs> race cars. Race cars. <laughs> we, we have a, uh, you guys know, we do a new spotlight car every month. This month, uh, I have to say, one of the best looking spotlight cars we've done yet. Uh, absolutely. Um, we, uh, we released a baby brother of this a little earlier on, mm -hmm. um, the, the Pink Pig, and uh, <laughs> happy to say we're, we're bringing the, the 91730 in. Uh, beautiful race car. Are we, are we looking at it right yeah, now? Yeah, we've got it up right now. They're uh, seeing it for the first time. Excellent. It's Sunoco. Yeah, this Sunoco is Sunoco livery, beautiful. This is, this is a good one. Um, and once again, this is, this is a free spotlight car. Everyone gets this um, for just showing up in Forza Land. Uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, huge horsepower car. It is. It goes up to about, it goes over 1,000 uh, HP, but you can boost it to up to 1,500. It has twin turbos. 1,000 feels like enough, but they're like, no. No, let's, no. let's do more. We're going, we're yeah. going let's go straight. to 11. Yeah, we're going or, to 11. Or go to 15 <laughs> yeah. in this case. It's got a 5.4 liter flat 
uh, 12. 12. And it's it, crazy. Yeah. It only weighs, it weighs under 1,800 pounds. I think it's 1,765. Yeah. Nice. And it can go 0 to 60 in, I want to say, 2.3 seconds and 0 to 100 in 3.9 seconds. Crazy, crazy fast. Closing on the uh, one to one power to weight ratio there. That's right. Pretty close. That's pretty crazy. Uh, well, apparently, in, this is a 73. It, it, it uh, drove in the Can, -Amer Can Am, which is the Canadian American series. Right. And out of the eight races, it won six in a row. Okay. Well, let's, so, um, let's fire it up. That's a we, good, we've looked at it in Fort Vista, and it's certainly pretty, but this thing is best when it's rolling. Looks a little like the Batmobile. There is some, some shades of the Batmobile. I have to say, Carrie, that I love the livery on this car. It's classic, like, 70s, but it looks, it looks just really slick. Yeah, no, I love it, too. It looks great. So uh, this is um, classic Can-Am racer uh, related to the Pink Pig, right, Jen? This is, uh, yeah, the difference is on this one, this is a 1917 which is uh, the most powerful of those models. They the built ultimate. them for, yeah. I think they started building them, I want to say, around, it was in the 60s. Okay. And they, and um, the Pink Pig, I can't remember, I want to say it's a 20. It might be mm -hmm. a 10. That was a 20. Is it a 20? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're going to take this, where else, to Lagoon in a second. I think you've set yourself up for a challenge here, Chris. Yeah. This car, <laughs> or, or a version of this car, sold at auction in 2012 for $4.4 .4 million. I, I see. So, really? 4.4? 4.4 million. Amazing. And I love the, the, if you see the, if we can get a shot at some point of like the, the seat that this driver is driving in, it's just the thinnest thing you've ever seen. It's like. They just didn't care back then about driver safety. <laughs> it's just, just get in and go, dude. If, if something happens, we've got another driver waiting. My favorite's the little stick-on labels. Yes, like the, uh, the, the label maker the label in the maker cockpit labels. there. That's fantastic. Yeah, this thing is pretty flat, but it, uh, it'll, it'll kick your butt. It's a little... <laughs> oh, but no. you were saying the design. There we go. Uh, you, but you were saying it, it feels fairly stable. Chris. Yeah, it um, it does. It's uh, it's surprisingly stable up through the mid uh, mid range of its power curve, mm -hmm. and then and then you just go spinning. Yeah, <laughs> on those it, exits, I would imagine it's all wheel spin, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's got a lot of power behind it. it, it it's deceptively, it, it's like, oh yeah, I'm I'm getting up through the, the the revs, and you're like going pretty flat, and it's not spinning the wheels, and you're like, I feel pretty good. I think I could drive this thing, and then <laughs> and then now you're you're in the wall. Well, <laughs> also Laguna Seca, like I said, you set yourself up for challenge here. Laguna Seca, you're always moving, you're always turning, you're always braking. They yeah, were, they were able of the oh, in the real oh. car to get. Uh, uh, 240 miles per hour. 240, like at Le Mans or something like that. It might be on the back straight at Le Mans. Amazing. Uh oh. Well, contact happens. Oh, there oh. We go. oh. those tire walls. They'll get uh, you. Ah, yes. Nice of you to let them by, though, Chris. Yeah, yeah, you know, courtesy, you. courtesy, racecraft. <laughs> That's racecraft. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's great. Uh, Please move ahead. Uh, why don't we complete this lap? And then we'll move on uh, to some other cars that are yeah, coming. Yeah, I, I got to say, this, this is a blast. Um, I mean, th this is, a course, of course, an old school blast of the past. But this is, this is a race car through and through. And I'm really happy this is, uh, this is coming to the, uh, the garage. One more car to add your garage. Just a reminder, this is your November Spotlight car. So this car is coming to everybody for free in Forza Motorsport Ooh. 7, which is super nice. Yeah. Uh, I love that. And we've got some other free cars that are coming. You saw at the top of the show, we had the Hot Wheels trailer that we played. Hot Wheels are coming both to Forza Horizon 4 and to Forza Motorsport 7. In fact, in Horizon 4, they've already started... You can get them in Forzathon events. You can get them in the Forzathon <laughs> shop and so forth. Uh, that's You can get the Twin Mill, the Bone Shaker, I think, is in Forza Horizon 4 as well. More to come. But seven cars are coming to Forza Horizon, sorry, Forza Motorsport 7. Mm -hmm. And those will be available tomorrow. You saw the trailer. Uh, why don't we take a look at some of these Hot Wheels cars? Because we've got them all in the collection. Now, some of these are going to be familiar to you. You know about the Bone Shaker. You know the Twin Mill. But you've never seen them quite like this. They've got 
new liveries, 50th anniversary. Of course, this is the 50th anniversary of Hot Wheels, so we've been celebrating uh, that by bringing these cars in. You remember the Hot Wheels expansion for Forza Horizon 3. We've had that great partnership with Hot Wheels for a long time now, and it's so cool to bring some old favorites into Forza Motorsport 7 with a new look, Chris, but we've also got some new cars yeah. that people haven't seen before. Yeah, uh, so I, I just got back from SEMA as well, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I, I gotta say, the first, of, first of all, all of these cars amazingly are real cars. Right, they that, work. That is that is the insanity of this thing. Um, and I was super inspired by by just seeing not just these cars in real life, but uh, if if you guys know, there was a um, a 50th anniversary Hot Wheels like build a car thing going mm -hmm. on, and uh, I was lucky enough to actually see the, the the unveiling of the winner. But basically, the gist of it is a bunch of people built cars that would eventually be they would compete against each other and eventually become a toy hot wheel a real die cast. Uh, yeah what and, a dream. Um, and these are really functional cars but that that passion about like these custom builds and the the imagination that was that was just there was just so awesome to see and then seeing these actual cars that we're going to have in the game uh, just on the lot uh, and driving around. Uh, e even this guy, the Twin Mill. The Twin Mill. Uh, which is one of the most classic, to me, one of the most classic Hot Wheels um, of all time. But now, uh, this When you saw these it. at SEMA, did they have these paint jobs on them? Some of them did, some okay. of them didn't. There was a Twin Mill with the, the, uh, one of the OG Blues. Okay. You know? Yep. Um, but yeah, a lot of the other ones had uh, the, this uh, 50th anniversary livery. Uh, which is pretty dang cool. Well, why don't we uh, why don't we select one and, and hop into a race? What do you guys want? Uh, Carrie, your choice. I mean, I like the bone shaker. Yeah. All right. That's a lot of fun. Let's do it. Let's do the bone shaker. So just so you guys know, this pack is coming into Forza Motorsport Seven as a free uh, free pack of cars for you guys. Uh, we want to make sure you understand that this is not the next car pack in the car pass. That is still yet to come. We'll have more to say on that in the in the future. Uh, so this is free for everyone. Everyone can play these Hot Wheels cars starting tomorrow. And that means that we're giving away not just the Spotlight car, but these cars, which is a total right. of eight free cars as a bonus. I was so glad that we were able to do that and throw something extra and have um, some things to do with them as well. Yeah, this, yeah, j this is just completely on top of what we were supposed to be doing for, for November. We, we have a lot of stuff happening this November. Mm. And we were just planning on doing this one specific race car, the 91730. Um, as our, our spotlight car, but um, but we really wanted to, to. Well, I love Hot Wheels. I, I'm sure most of us grew up with Hot totally. Wheels. I, I have yeah. a massive destroyed Matchbox and Hot Wheels collection. Um, so this is this is deep nostalgia for me. Um, but uh, but actually seeing these things in real life and being able to just kind of celebrate with Hot Wheels and you know have these real cars come into the game, um, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. Now, I think there's two schools of Hot Wheels collectors when you're young. It's the ones that collect them and don't open them, and the ones that crash them completely. That's I was definitely in the second oh, camp. Crash. Yes. I crashed. <laughs> I d destroyed my Hot Wheels because that's what they're oh, there for. Oh, this thing oh. can't break. These things go f go straight, and then they like to go straight, <laughs> and, and, and then they don't break. <laughs> And, there's and the, they the, don't turn. There's the bug. There's the, the Volkswagen Beetle, the 50th anniversary of Volkswagen Beetle as part of that. You got that huge like spinal cord shifter on the bone shaker, which is just unmistakable. The thing is impressive live. And while we're looking at the cars, apparently we're also doing a contest with Hot Wheels. Yes, we are. We are. Uh, there's a contest that Hot Wheels is going to be kicking off. Actually, it kicks off tomorrow. Uh, via, they're asking people to create a livery on one of these Hot Wheels cars. Mm -hmm. And you can tweet it, uh, no, put it on Instagram. Instagram. Instagram with the hashtag, make sure I got this right, hashtag Hot Wheels Forza Legends. That's right. And then you are entered in a contest where you can win cool stuff from Hot Wheels. But the coolest thing, Jen, is you can win a die cast version of the car you create. That's amazing. That's crazy. That's, That's like a one of a kind gift, right? The winning, the winner gets a liveried version of toy version of the car they created. What a prize! So remember that that contest starts tomorrow. Uh, you can uh, use when you take a photo of your creation, use the hashtag Hot Wheels Forza Legends, and you'll be able to enter that. We'll have more information on rules and that. You can check the week in review this week. We'll have those rules where you can check out all all of that going on. But uh, how you feeling about the bone shaker, Chris? This is a, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> It is as um, aerodynamic and sticky as it looks. As you would expect, <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> which is not to say not much. There's that Camaro, 50th anniversary Camaro. That's also part of the pack. 
That's pretty sweet looking. Um, in addition to look the those cars, flames. yeah, they look great. Jen, we've got a bunch of, it's like Hot Wheels month in Forza oh 7. Oh yeah, so um, because it's the 50th anniversary, we're celebrating with five weeks of events. And starting this Friday, we have, we're actually starting with two Forza Thons and not one, because okay. one will go the entire length of the event. And every time you beat one of the Hot Wheels Forza Thon events each week, you're going to get an exclusive driver gear. Oh, well, we got to see those. Their decade driver gear. I think we're going to show them in yeah. a minute. Yeah, want to see some driver gear? Yeah. yeah, let's take them out. And so each week, take a look at it, exclusive. And then, on addition to that, we have this 50th anniversary driver gear that just appeared. Yeah, you might be seeing that on, on the feed there of... The, the 50th anniversary. We so lost our feed. Yeah, there's we'll 60. We'll get it back. There's 60. There it is right there. There's We're just going to give that to everyone at the end of the five weeks. I love it. Or right, look at the cars just for one last time. Right? Yeah, let's go through the cars. So we got the Rip Rod. Yep. We have the Bone Sugar we just took a look at. The Mustang. 2005. Yes. This is not the 2018 Mustang no. that people keep asking about in chat. This is the 2005 Hot Wheels. I hope to see this being sent around some... Tandem drifting. Uh, and then we have a Corvette. Now that's a new, mm -hmm. that one's that new. That's a new one. Any of the ones that don't have the black livery, the black, gold, and blue livery, are new to Forza. Twin of course, mil, of twin course. So 50th anniversary livery. Love it. Extremely difficult to drive from the <laughs> cockpit cam. That's right. <laughs> uh, and then we have a Camaro. That's one of my favorite cars in the world. Yes. Is it? Yeah. That's so beautiful. Camaro? Yes. Look at the little 50 at the front The yeah. front end there. It looks just Pretty tasty. Very, very nice. And then our Drag Beetle. Drag Beetle. And we're not just going to have Forza Thon events. We're going to have events set up in Rivals. We're going to have drive a, a hopper with any of your Hot Wheels cars and even some in League. So there's going to be a lot to do. Let's, let's and if you don't this. like Hot Wheels for some reason, there's plenty more to do. And, Jen, we've got a bounty hunter coming, too. Yeah, so... It's going to be Thanksgiving here in the States, so we're going to have nine of us turkeys from <laughs> Turn 10 to be part of nine. Uh, nine, including Chris. Yes. Oh, way. nice. And, and Brian's going to be in it. That's right. Bring it. We're the easy wins right there. <laughs> <laughs> Two easy wins. <laughs> Definitely. It's going to be a bountiful harvest. Okay. Bounty hunter starting this Friday uh, against nine of our Turn 10 de developers and lots of prizes. Yep. That's good. Should I talk about the car? Uh, we can let's let's show. Why don't you cycle through the the, uh, the suits driver gear here while you're yeah. talking about that? Yeah. Um, the we're, the event is going to be. I'll give it away this time. We've been kind of tricking people and not letting them know, and even hiding it in our developer bills. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be the 16 Dodge Viper ACR. Nice. On mm -hmm. I think it's Watkins Glen. Uh, so everyone everyone can start practicing. Yes. Get ready for it. It's okay. It's gonna be nice. Carrie, you did a bounty hunter recently. I did do a bounty hunter recently. How was the? How did? What did? What did you think of the bounty hunter experience? It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say it was really hard to beat my original time. Yes. Um, because yes. you need to uh, race clean, which is the difficulty. I think. Yeah. I tend to like go off track on a lot of those uh, hairpin turns, but it was a really fun experience. What I always find about bounty hunters, you learn a lot about your about that car and yes. about that yes. track. Mm -hmm. You spend so much time yeah. on it. Um, it, it's a great learning experience mm -hmm. to figure out a specific car and track combo. Um, well, yeah. have we shown all the, the driver? I think gear? we let's, went through most of them. These. This is my personal favorite. I the love 70s. the 70s one, too. So I that'll think that be next awesome. week. Oh. 70s are all good. And next, starting on the 16th, we're going to have, instead of doing weekly Forza Thons, yes. because it's holidays for a lot of people, a lot of people travel, I, the, the events that go live on the 16th are actually going to be up for two weeks. Okay. So we're going to have twice the number of Forzathons, but they'll be available for two weeks to give people more time with all their travel plans. And, and people can find all of that in the game. And yes. Go to the Forzathon screen. You're going to know yeah. what events are coming yeah. up, right? And the, the Penske Porsche, the 1973 that we looked at before, the Spotlight Challenge is going to be on Lime Rock Full. Okay. That's a, that'll be a fun track. Yeah. Well, a lot going on with Hot Wheels and other things. I, I see we, we shift gears and, and talk about a little bit about Race Shop because this is something that we talked about uh, a long time ago. We said that... Perfectly timed. Perfectly yes. timed. So, Carrie, um, 
we, we announced months ago that prize crates were coming out, and this thing called Race Shop was coming in. Mm -hmm. as, we, as we look at it here in the main menu, tell us about Race, race Shop. Yeah, so I think the important thing to note here is that um, we listened to the community, we heard you guys, we heard your feedback, and we want that relationship to continue. So out of that came Race Shop. So if you want to enter into that yeah, now, let's Chris. Go on in. All right, boom. <laughs> it went into four there it goes. So Race Shop is your one-stop experience for mods, driver gear, and badges. And okay. we want players to sort of come back here every um, six minutes to see what's new. As you can see in the timer on the lower left, um, it's at six seconds, so we'll be able to see it restock okay. with a whole new set of driver gear, mods, and badges. There it goes. Oop. Goodbye. Yep. Hello. Yeah, um, so there will be different strategies uh, for different drivers to collect mods and suits and check back as much as they can um, for badges as well. And uh, the pricing structure is based off of rarity in the case of drivers, uh, driver gear and badges. Mm -hmm. And then for mods, it's on payout potential. Got it. So how does this work? When I'm, when I'm uh, playing the game, I come into Race Shop. Am I seeing the same thing everyone is seeing? Or? No, uh, you'll be seeing things that are specific to you, local to your box. Okay. Yeah. So everybody, it's, and then you come back. Why, why, why did you, why six minutes? Why, why that time? Um, so six minutes is about the amount of time it takes you to jump in and out of a race on average. Okay. So we did a lot of tweaking of the values. Um, again, we would love to hear your feedback on, um, you know, the timing, <laughs> uh, the quality of the mods and the driver gear from common to legendary and how many items you're seeing in the shop and then um, I'm always curious um, just from your point of view as a UX specialist like how, how do we get to rate how many iterations does something like this go through like what's the workflow how, how does the other how does the team sort of contribute to this to yeah to find the right design it takes a lot of teamwork and um, I'm actually supposed to give a shout out to the race shop team yeah. so hi guys <laughs> what up, race uh, shop? you guys are watching oh. <laughs> yeah um so it takes a ton of work and iterations I think we went through play testing like four or five times with this mm -hmm. um just trying to tweak the values and the quantity of the items that you're you're seeing and get everything just right and all of those things all the prices all the even the items themselves are we have control over how many of uh, those kinds of things appear right we have yes. a lot of control here yes we do so um that's something that we love again to engage the community on great um what i loved about this chris is that you can actually access the race shop not just from the front screen but there's lots of different places you can sort of touch it yeah if if you had purchased a, a prize crate any time before, um, you would know kind of the flow of, of this whole scenario mm -hmm. um, of where Ray Shop appears and whatnot. So, so for instance, um, off the main menu, if you just go on the, the, the tile Ray Shop, it will take you right to the Ray Shop. But if you had gone through, say, driver gear, if you click on driver gear, you can actually go to the Ray Shop, um, mm. pressing the Y button. Yeah, there you can it is. go like, oh, um, cool, here's all the, the gear that I currently have. I, I would love to see if there's any other suits that are available that I might want to purchase. Just hit the Y button, it takes you right and actually puts the cursor um, directly on the, the driver gear. On that if, you, if you came cool. through the driver gear, ah, okay. uh, which is kind of nice, right? Like, oh, I want driver gear, cool, here you go. Um, and so if you buy any of the driver gear here, it, it, it's not like it restocks immediately. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's gone for the, the six minutes until the refresh, right? So, um, and it'll show you uh, if you've already owned it Right, as well. so you're not so, going to buy two of right. construction workers. That's something exactly like that. right. Um, but you can buy, if you buy a card the first time through and it happens to reappear, you could rebuy it. Oh, absolutely. You yeah, you can buy multiples of, of, of cards, just you would have to wait for the refresh. So if you want a no turning back, you can buy it right now. Buy that thing. It uh, you've bought that single copy of it. Mm -hmm. um, if it if it shows up again, you can buy it again as many times as you want. Um, just uh, yeah, just to wait for it to come back. Cool. Um, and so yeah, so let's see. Uh, we went through the driver gear one. If you want, if you went to the mods area, uh, you can go to race shop from from there as well uh, and buy a mod. And go as well. straight to mods. Yep. Uh, so same thing. And, and there's a number of places in the race setup. Um, I kind of just kind of jump into that real quick. Uh, single player free play. Um, you can see here, you can both go to the race shop as mm -hmm. well as um, when you equip mods, you can go and 
uh, and actually go purchase some new ones if you don't actually have any or don't like the ones you currently have. And my guess is, Carrie, that that's, this is going to be a screen people use this a lot. Yeah. Because they're coming out of a race. Maybe they, obviously, mm -hmm. maybe they want to get some mod cards. This is the place to go. Right. Strategically, you can see the mods uh, button is right next to the race shop button. So mm -hmm. you can jump back and forth between the two or you can, you know, press uh, Y button from mods to go straight into race shop. Makes sense. Yeah, I um I hope you guys like it. I, obviously, this is this has been a, a long time coming mm -hmm. and a, a lot of work that's gone into this, um, and we're not always the fastest developer <laughs> on the planet, but we try to get things right now. Um, we really don't want to release something that is uh, not going to do so well um, for for anyone. So interesting thing is is uh, Carrie runs our usability studies, our what we call user research, mm -hmm. um, uh, and we do a lot of user testing with this. So we bring people in that either are aware of Forza, play Forza, don't know about Forza, um, and we, we run them through all these different tests of of uh, our features and whatnot. So we've gone through many many iterations of, of of this race shop just to make sure we we had a lot of things correct, like the timer. Um, in terms of refreshing, the, the number of mods available, mm. the pricing, uh, the, the number of suits, all, all of those things went through tons of different iterations just to get uh, just right. So I'd uh, love to hear you guys' feedback. Um, this goes live tomorrow. Yep. Um, play with it all you want. And once again, this, this is more tuned to kind of the campaign mode uh, flow, right? Mm -hmm. this, this is less so much about... Uh, meetups or multiplayer focused competitive stuff. This is more like, oh, I'm playing through the campaign and I get through a race and I get uh, used up one of my mods. I can pick up another mod. I can afford a new suit. Cool. Switch things out. And it really just kind of is paced to um, kind of a, a, a normal uh, campaign kind of kind of loop and flow. Actually, one of the questions I had, Carrie, was uh, does rarity affect um, is it only price or is it if, does that mean how often a, 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 I will an item will appear in the race shop. Does rarity it, matter for the race shop? It doesn't matter um, insofar as like rare items won't show up as much in the race shop. Yep. It's that rare items are allocated to certain slots. They have a higher probability of showing up in certain slots. Okay, all right, that makes sense. Cool. Well, there you go. There's your look at race shop coming into Forza Motorsport 7 starting tomorrow with the November update. But that's not all, Chris Asaki. Oh, my goodness. We've got more. Thank you for that, Carrie. <laughs> sure. Appreciate that. That was really fun. Uh, you guys might remember, in last month's show, we were talking about um, some of the Forza fundamentals that make Forza Forza. We had a great conversation with Chris and Aaron Bryan, who were, uh, uh, sorry, Aaron Brooks, uh, who were talking about sort of the underlying systems that make Forza Forza. Um, we showed off a video about collisions, some collision improvements that we made last, uh, it, that the team is making now. Those are actually coming into the game with the November update. Uh, and Chris, this was uh, really warmly received by the community. They loved what they saw. I have to say, I was a bit surprised when we were like, yeah, it's coming in November. Yeah, um, we, we, uh, we tried to fast track this one. So um, just to give some background. Um, so. We've been working on collisions for a little bit now. Mm -hmm. um, and this is sort of our uh, four-pronged, five-pronged, I can't remember how many prongs <laughs> multi -pronged. we have. Multi-pronged. <laughs> multi uh, attack on just making, um, well, everything in, in Forza uh, fundamentally better, but particularly the online experience, the mm -hmm. multiplayer experience. Um, we know, um, traditionally, we, we've been more of a campaign-focused, offline type of game. Uh, and we're, we're absolutely invested in, in the multiplayer focus of, of the game now. Um, and we've been pouring a lot of our efforts. As you guys know, um, we've done a lot to update multiplayer ever since we launched over a year ago. Um, this is one of those things that, uh, that helps pretty much everyone that will ever play multiplayer in the future, mm -hmm. um, starting tomorrow. Um, our, our collisions, as well as um, some of our, our work around uh, just overall network code, network, yep. Um, yep. some of our underlying physics, uh, and of course, Forza Race regulations, all are supposed to be to help the, the online experience. Um, and in this case, uh, we, what we looked at was a number of things that were causing issues in multiplayer. Um, obviously, collision's a big one of them. And um, the, the community and a lot, of, uh, a lot of the team first went to kind of a regulation system and a player ranking system and that sort of thing to kind of monitor and manage uh, any, any type of behavior online. Um, I, I was really, really insistent that we look at the whole picture, uh, not just um, one particular or two particular slices of it. And uh, one of these things is, is changing the collision system. It's just uh, 
uh, I think would help significantly. So why don't we why don't we take people back to last right. month? Because we right. I want I want to set the context with the videos that we ran last month. If you missed it last month, we had some videos that were sort of there to sort of explain how the old system works mm -hmm. compared to how the new system works. So let's take a look at uh, the video of the current system. As it stands on November 5th, you see the car runs into the blue car, it spins that car around. That's forts of physics as they exist right now. And then you see the second collision, Chris. That's so this the new one system. in particular. Yeah, mm -hmm. so in particular, there's a head-on collision that, that'll be part of this, this, uh, this loop. Um, and the big thing is you'll, you'll kind of see there's this kind of delay and then and then the the car will then actually go spinning off or be shot off um and uh and there, there's some issues obviously in how that physics works mm -hmm. like clearly when you have a head-on collision like that you're not going to supposed to punt the other car uh, right. into infinity um and the big deal was uh, that that was because of the latency uh, right. and how we resolve those collisions so obviously um that was a big problem uh so what we've done is is completely change that network code and how we resolve collisions um, from the start. And uh, you'll see much more realistic collisions now. Uh, and we can also do things like um, add assist. So the biggest mm -hmm. thing is you'll see today. Should we go, you want to uh, check out the assist now? Yeah, let's, let's, let's go, go do check that. that out. Let me pop out of this, uh, go to assist here. We've added a new assist. So starting tomorrow, you will see, just because we wanted to, um, our, our, our menus aren't complex enough so we decided to add another. It's options. It's <laughs> another, options for players. Another menu. We want to give options. Option. Uh, so so that's what we did. We added this thing called collision assist. You'll find it in the appropriately named assist uh, portion of the menu. Mm -hmm. um, you can turn it on or off. Yep. Um, it is a per player assist. We think of it as an assist. And so what happens is, if it is off, all of your current behavior, all of collisions, everything will behave exactly how you currently have it. More like in uh, in single player right now. Uh, meaning that uh, the forces will all be appropriately, or I'm sorry, approximately the same as something like you would you would imagine in, in single player. If you turn them on, it will clamp a number of the uh, the forces in a collision that either you or someone um, hitting you uh, will impart to other players or yourself, mm -hmm. um, but only if you have it on. So let me explain this a little bit better. Um, there are additional forces outside of just. Uh, raw forces that, that uh, affect a car when a collision is resolved. So you have things like yaw, pitch, and roll, um, and outside of just the pure energy of the, for, uh, of, the, uh, of the collision. So what we've done with the collision assist is clamp the yaw, pitch, and roll inputs and mm -hmm. outputs. So if you have the assist on, um, it will dramatically reduce your, uh, your tendency to roll, to spin out, uh, to lose traction, basically. Uh, so this is, this is great if you're in mid-corner and someone kind of quarter panels you, or even if you're just driving along and some um, uh, griefer comes and tries to ram you. If you have the collision assist on, no longer will you go spinning off. Yeah, just you like see that. It just like that. We have it on right now. We're, show, we're in a lobby, and it, we are intentionally crashing here just to show this new uh, collision assist off because we want to, to show exactly how it works. The, the difference in the feel, I encourage everybody to try it when they get the, the content update. It's life-changing. Someone like me who gets in wrecks a lot because I'm so bad, whether I'm driving myself or I'm in multiplayer right, in a private, it, you feel like you can recover from it. Yes. It feels more realistic. You don't feel like you're, you're ping-ponging all over the track. If you're getting hit in mid corner, the odds of you spinning away are, are, are much less. Much less. They actually, in in practice, the cars in at least in collision feel heavier. They, they feel like they're just more, that much more solid. That's that's ex that's exactly what it feels like with the collision assist, uh, assist on. So this, um, I, I'm really excited about this. Th like I said, this is only one of the prongs of the multi prong <laughs> thing that will help our our multiplayer experience and. Um, you, if you if you roll with this thing on, you will just see a, a, a dramatic, cleaner feel to any race with any type of collisions in it, um, just in terms of circuit racing. But uh, the the other benefit, obviously, we have kind of three motorsport modes that we really are invested in. One of them, of course, is drift racing, mm -hmm. and um, which I'm you know, trying to do I, now. <laughs> I see uh, a number of our drifters at arrows out here. Yeah, and, what's um, up, arrow? And. This is something that I, I know um, a lot of people have been asking for um, over the oh, years now, but uh, particularly since we've added the uh, the drift update um, this last summer, 
uh, a lot of things came to light around just the streaming, I'm um, sorry, the, uh, the, the drifting experience. And one of these things, of course, is, hey, uh, we want to get as close as possible together and the quote-unquote hitboxes between the different cars um, and collisions in multiplayer would really help if, if they were either reduced or the, the hitboxes were just generally better in multiplayer so you can get really, really, really tight and close in, in uh, tandem drifting. Um, as one of the, the, uh, the added benefits here is that um, with this system on, the hitboxes aren't necessarily better, um, and we, we're definitely looking at that. Uh, mm -hmm. But the overall um, behavior of car-to-car -car and light touching will dramatically be better, especially in, tra in, in tandem, tandem drifting. drifting yep. um, it'll, it'll be a much better experience there, and so you can probably get a lot closer, a little more contact, mm. and uh, without the fear of either of you going spinning off. So it's a, it's, this is a... Um, for me, a, a really, really good win for the for everything. And I'm also thinking of cars like LMP cars that have traditionally been really sensitive to this kind of contact. Oh yeah, it's going to be they're going to feel you're going to be able to do side by side yes. racing without the fear of either ruining your race or the other I, person's I mean, race. I mean, there's there's the added benefit here. Yes, if you want to be a super super sim racer, we support you, and you know that that's why this is an assist. We 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 think of this as an assist. Mm -hmm. If you want it on, um, I, I really do believe. A lot of the competitive online racing will just feel better. Mm. It'll feel cleaner. It, it um, you, you actually will have the ability to race on the limits a lot more because you don't have the fear of, of just being punted or just light contact uh, pushing you off track because you're already on the limit. Um, that this is this is going to be, I think, a big win for for everyone here. I believe it's default on tomorrow. No, so okay, so th there it is defaulted on for anyone um, in. The, there, there's a different a number of different uh, global assist settings. Great. We I usually plan on custom with a, you know a, a mishmash of here and on on and off, but if you go to uh, global assist setting easy, which I, I think the game initially starts on easy, mm -hmm. um, it will have the collision assist it's set really to on. To so you can see if you're on medium, oh. it has it off. But if you go to easy, it'll all automatically be on. So if you're just driving around on easy, um, which most people do when they start the game. Uh, you'll you'll automatically have this um, this collision assist on. Um, so something to to take a note of. Um, I would turn it on just to check it out. Feel if it, you yeah. don't like it, cool. You can turn, turn it, it off. off. Um, but uh, I I think it in general it'll it'll help uh, anyone who has it on. Yeah, and this like we said, this is coming tomorrow to Forza Motorsport Seven. So you will be able to play with these assists and see what you like. Whether you like collision assist on or off, give it a try. I think yeah, people are going to dig it. I, I'm pretty. Yeah, this is. Um, like I said, we have been working on this for, for quite a while. That the, the quote unquote um, there's behind the scenes stuff that uh, that we usually don't talk about. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the, the the actual coding involved in something like this wasn't relatively a huge effort. Mm -hmm. But the the testing of it mm -hmm. and um, and just making sure that every car on every track and every combination and and uh, all the different multiplayer setup types, uh, we just had to make sure that it all worked. So. Um, it did take a lot of our time uh, and focus just to, to land it for for, um, for November, but pretty happy to get here. And I did want to talk about some other. This is uh, yeah. since this is a little bit of our, of our fundamentals um, discussion. Yeah, I just kind of wanted to tease out some of the other things. I, I know there, there's a lot of um, of our more hardcore folks uh, tuning in right now, and I just want, I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the stuff that's that's coming in the future. Let's do it. Um, yeah. So one of the things that. Uh, this isn't really multiplayer focused, but um, one of the things I, I, I definitely see a lot of um, discussion around and, and concerns around is just AI in general mm -hmm. in our game, the drive guitars, the AI. Um, we actually have a whole team right now focused on making our AI better. Uh, and we actually have in implemented and experimented with a new driving line for, um, for the AI, and, and uh, we've just seen some really, really re good results with this. Um, one, one of my goals is to get to a place where the, the AI is driving um, as good as real players, real professional Forza RC players, uh, without any assists on. Like, we have these, to me, they're really stupid. I hate either rubber banding or any type of, of unrealistic, um, uh, for better lack of better terms, uh, some band-aids to, to make AI a little more competitive at the, the upper ranges of, of our AI settings like the unbeatable setting. Yep. Um, they just have ridiculous power additions, and you know, when, you're, when you're trying to actually race honestly against them, it just, it just doesn't play out right. Sure. Um, so we're trying to get rid of all of that. And um, there's, some, there's some really good advancements that uh, even in the past couple months we've seen. 
Um, so I don't know when this is landing. I just kind of wanted to tease that out. Okay. Um, and we'll probably have uh, Aaron and uh, maybe even our AI guy yeah. uh, come on, come and talk a little bit about this. Um, I, I, this, this is actually one of our big investments right now outside of the multiplayer thing. Mm -hmm. um, just because I, we spent so much time talking about <laughs> multiplayer, yes. uh, which is good because it's a big passion of mine. Um, to make this right, uh, but uh, but we're also investing a lot in just the overall Forts experience, and that that is what what is the Forts fundamental. So, cool, fantastic. Well, um, I know. Uh, speaking of the things that multiplayer players care about, you've heard us talking about Forts of Race regulations for a long time now. We showed it back, Chris. We showed it for the first time back in May. And uh, we started talking about it, and ever since we've been talking about it a little bit more, um, we're getting there. This is, this is sort of like the monthly message. We're getting there. It's we're still getting working there. on it, right? Um, yeah, and, and uh, Carrie's here, um, and you know, like, like we've talked about, we work really, really closely together. Um, obviously, it took a long time to get us to land the removal of pri prize crates yeah. in Race Shop, and we just landed that now. Um, our Forza Race regulations are coming. Mm -hmm. um, Rest assured, they are deep in production. Um, we are, we've done tons and tons of play tests at this point. We've done yes. a lot of usability tests that Kerry's been running. Um, we've uh, christened our new play test lab and had <laughs> a, a bunch of people come and check it out over the last couple of weeks. Uh, it, it's uncovered a lot of issues in the last couple months um, of, of stuff that we want to get right. Um, and so, yeah, I, it, it's coming. It's not going to be this month. It's not going to be next month. Yep. Um, but... Uh, but we do have a treat. But we do have a little treat. We're, we, we are going to be talking a little bit more in depth, I think, next month. Yeah, we are, we are going to be talking more about Forza Race regulations in detail in December. But first, because we know you guys are looking so forward to it, we have a teaser of what Forza Race regulations look like as they stand right now. So let's roll that. there i know we we didn't want to talk we deliberately didn't want to talk over that because there's a lot that we want to say about forza race regulations but we wanted to give you a tease of what to expect um as we make our way as we continue the development of the of the feature so i know you guys are going to be dissecting that looking forward to seeing what you come up with and next month chris we're gonna have a lot more to say about forza frr in, depth next month in terms of all of the details on Forza Race regulations and uh, really looking forward to that. Well, I can't wait for that. I know everyone is looking forward to that. Anyway, thank you so much, Carrie and Jen and Chris. Thank you so much for being here, uh, part of the show. We are going to, uh, actually, I think we're going to look at the schedule right now and get everybody caught up with where we are, what's yet to come. Uh, we are going to be looking at the Forza RC 2018 season, and we still have our friends from Playground Games who are here to show off the latest in Forza Horizon 4, so you don't want to miss that. Uh, right now, we have this beautiful McLaren 720 behind us, that courtesy of McLaren of Bellevue. They were so nice to bring this beautiful car by. We're going to take a look at that, and then we're going to recap the 2018 Forza RC season right after this. Forza Racing Championship 2018. An incredible field of Forza drivers, the best in the world here. Anyone can come here, and that's the absolute joy of the Forza Racing Championship. These guys have battled it out for eight weeks online to get here. 
Billy Sue making his debut event here. Mitch, the most hyped driver out there. Leash, our most decorated driver. He's got his main competitor in box sitting right next to him. It's time to go racing. Get things started. Let's go. Lightning followed by Lage box just behind. Oh, oh my gosh, a huge collision here. The top two in the front, and they're going to fall all the way to the back. Absolutely catastrophic event for our top two. Fox taking a win in the semifinals. Look at that face. He cannot believe it. Twenty-four remain. Talk about Zoom. This is a guy that he's won sixty-four percent of his races. He'll have to fight off the attentions of Williams Mitch. Yeah. He wants to get onto that podium. The Zoom, that Zoom off. Zoom on already off the track. Lage and Box are suddenly tied on points coming into the final round. You see some nerves there on Box's face, and I'm not surprised at all. Lage with the five We have complete box. chaos at Clarumba. This is getting very scrappy indeed. This could be the race where everything changes. Live from London, it's Championship Sunday. We will crown a world champion by the end of today. Already Leish under extreme pressure. Blinky breaking point, it's a tough one here. And here's William down the inside. The elusive double overtake. Fox looking like he's under attack. Leish is going to take this. He'll be perfect going into the reverse grid race. We have one last race ahead of us, folks, and there's going to be a fantastic one. Reverse grid. The battle for the podium positions is on. Now Leish got to be careful here. Oh, and he's turning round Box. That's not the sort of driving from a champion elect. That battle with Box, it's just the story of the season we're looking at right here. Going to be the champion, is it going to be Lage or Fox? And crowning your Forza Racing World Champion, it's Lage! So much action from the beginning. Well, it was just two weeks ago that we wrapped up the 2018 Forza RC season. It sometimes feels like a long time ago, sometimes feels like just yesterday that we started this season, but the 2018 season is done. So glad to, be, to have two friends of mine here recapping the season with G2 Lege and Ali Tak. Uh, Lege, we'll start with you, Aurelian Malaya. Make yeah. sure we get that, that name perfect, and, <laughs> but everybody knows you as G2 Lege. Welcome to the show, man. How are you? Yeah, yeah, thanks. I'm really fine, and you? I'm you? fantastic. It's so nice to have you here. Uh, this is not your first time to Seattle. You've been here a couple times, right? Uh, even more. It's my fourth time in, uh, in Seattle. I've been there for the Invitational first, then uh, the Playoff one. I came back here for Logi uh, with Logitech for Pax West and then fourth time here. So you're practically a resident at this point. Practically, <laughs> this is like uh, your second home. It's my second home, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, well, welcome, man. Great to have you here. Ali Tack as well, uh, the voice of the Forza RC in a lot of ways. How are you, man? Welcome I'm, back. I'm very well. Thank We've, you. We, we spent some time in this studio in We've the past been year. We've been here before, haven't we? I'm getting, yes, we have. I'm getting a little bit of deja vu. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's good to be back. And uh, it's, what a great year it's been, right? Well, what, it, it's been a fantastic year, and I have to say, you're you're sitting next to a champion. That that must feel pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we were going out for dinner last night. I've been trying to absorb as many little a little bits of knowledge about how to get faster and Forza. It's a it's a such a massively difficult thing to do to get the kind of speed mm. that you've got. So, well, um, Lazy, I wanted to start with um, if we go back all the way to the beginning of the year. Now, you've been a part of the Forza RC for for several years now. Yeah, but if we take you all the way back to February in the Invitational. What were your expectations coming into the Invitational and looking ahead to the 2018 season? What did you want to do? Well, my first goal was, of course, to win uh, the Invitational. Mm -hmm. That was the first step. Um, then when I saw the full schedule of the Forza RC, I was like, wow, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a really long season, so really tough. Um, I, mean, I just expected to, to be at my best level, um, to be able to, to, yeah, to fight for the top positions. So, yeah. Uh, and, and it turned out to be just that, a very long season. We were talking earlier before the show. Yeah. This has been probably the longest, uh, most grueling season for the, for the drivers. Yeah. Uh, tell me about that. What has this season been like for you when you look back at it? Obviously, you've had a tremendous amount of success, but it yeah. was a long road for you, huh? Yeah, really long road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I managed to, uh, to, to win the Invitational first, so that was 
the first step of it, as I said. Um, then we had a lot of online races. I mean, throughout the year, we had more than 100 combos to, uh, to learn, so different tracks, different cars. So really tough, a lot of practice time, a lot of, lot of commitment, actually, to, to, to the Forza RC. So Ma really tough. Imagine that, Ali, 100 car and track combinations that you had to learn and be at the top of your form every other week. It's hard to relate to something like that as, as, a, as a normal Forza driver. How, what, what do you think? It's nuts, right? It's nuts. Yeah. It's, it's a challenge that uh, you only really get at the Forza Racing Championship. You know, the way we move from car type to car type, not just within one category of cars like GT cars, it's, it's to you know, LMP cars, to a road car, all over the place. Different driving styles come out as you go along. So the, the ability to adapt, I think, is super important. Have you found that maybe you're getting better or you've, you've, you're a strong adaptive driver? <sighs> I mean, I think I, get, I can be good with uh, a lot of cars, but of course you need to get some practice on everything just to get up to speed on, on all of those combos, actually, because we, we, we raced so many different cars, so many different types of cars. So, yeah, it was pretty tough and a lot of practice. Was there a particular, uh, looking back on the season, was there a particular car and track combo that you were especially excited about or especially not looking forward to, something <laughs> that you felt like didn't show off you the best way? Well, I don't really like the front wheel cars because <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> it's uh, like it makes the field the field even tighter. Like everybody is super close, um, and we saw that in, uh, on the leaderboards. I mean, there was a run rival um, on one Kings Glen with a um, Civic Type R, I think. Mm -hmm. um, everybody was extremely co close, so <laughs> yeah, more <laughs> difficult to 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 be up to speed on that car. And plus, you know that some of your competition actually love those front-wheel drive cars, yeah. and that's where they spend them. I'm thinking of Mitch, Ali. That's right. a guy who loves yeah. that, those kinds of cars. Yeah, and what a story it's been for Mitch this year, somebody who really is new to the Forza Racing Championship and throughout the year yeah. has been impressing more and more. What's your impression of Mitch uh, on track as a driver? Well, he was really the underdog here. I mean, came out of nowhere, and he got three third places, actually, on playoffs and on the final. So really an impressive season for him. Um, no, incredible. Yeah. yeah, incredible. Yeah, and <laughs> definitely. Lays, you, you, um, two, two moments that, that stick out to me of your season was A, coming in second place in the Series 1 playoffs to box. Um, uh, oh, no, Series 1 playoffs. Series I, think, one playoff. I, I, I came fifth on that uh, one. Oh, fifth, yeah, sorry. <laughs> fifth. Uh, uh, but, uh, but also missing a week in C C Series 2. Yeah. <laughs> that must have made a tough job even that much more difficult. Tell me about what it meant to miss an entire week and then still have to be in that mindset of c competition. Well, I managed to get first on the rival as well. So it's, uh, I got 1,000 points here. Um, so I still lost points, not during the, the rest of the week. Um, but it wasn't as bad as if I missed it completely. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it was still manageable to, uh, to be able to recover on the next three rounds. Mm. But, yeah, of course, it was a tough challenge, and <laughs> yeah, another one. What, what's the harder thing, the rivals, qualifiers, or the actual races that you had to do? <laughs> well, it's totally different, I think, because rival, we need a lot of time to put some impressive lap times. Um, I mean, to be, I mean, people are just at their best here. Mm. So it's not about racing when someone is making a mistake, of, uh, mistake in front of you, you can take an advantage of that. Um, when you're going into rival, you, I mean, mistakes aren't a lot at all. And you need to put a lot of laps, a lot of laps to get the perfect lap. Um, and races, of course, are tough as well because, well, it's racing. You never know what can happen. Ali, some standout moments for you. Uh, I know casting side by side with John Heindahl must have been a highlight for you. <laughs> yeah, indeed. that was nuts. Yeah. yeah, what a cool way to, uh, what a cool thing to have done like, <laughs> in my year. I didn't really have a space for it in my calendar. I didn't have anything penciled in. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know? So it was, it was, that was nuts. It's so on cool the bucket surprise. list, though. Yeah. Now you can check it off. Right, right, exactly. That's done. You know, what's next? I guess driving this car. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll right. do that later. Yeah, yeah, we'll do that later. Um, my highlight for this year has definitely been watching Lage and Box. Mm -hmm. uh, just that rivalry. I love it on track, but also off track, it's been kind of fun. <laughs> you guys shared a hotel room, right? <laughs> yeah, in Mexico, yeah, that's right. You've been kind of interacting <laughs> a little bit. You, we were talking last night, you were telling me about um, maybe Box trying to come to London with a bit of a sort of I don't know. Right, but, yeah, a yeah. little bit of posture, maybe a little bit of, <laughs> of kind of like a, a little, make a little bit of distance between the two of yourselves. Yeah, exactly. You I was trying to put some distance. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and what was your solution to that? What was your uh, just come to him. Come to him, right? Put the arm around. I like yeah, exactly. That. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we're friends in real life as well. So I mean, 
it's a, it's, that's the cool thing, because you guys are friends, but you know, there's that rivalry as well, and there's yeah. that competitive side to it. Yeah, I mean, it's different, because like, of course, well, friends in real life, we, we've done so many events together, so of course, we, we need to get to know each other. Um, but yeah, coming to a competition, of course, it's tough, because we are competitors, and we're both fighting for top, uh, for top positions. So it's a different approach, yeah. It's one of the things, uh, watching you guys go in, in all the playoffs, especially the LAN events where you were all together, it made me wonder what you guys were talking about in between races. Was there a lot of conversation? And, and oh. what kind of things were you saying? <laughs> in between <laughs> races, I think uh, no one is talking to anybody. Really? Yeah, just sitting in front of our screens waiting for adjudication. So that's all. And we did, we did see, Ali, we did some p see, uh, I'm thinking of Zoom expressing some frustration. Roadrunner wasn't happy at, at, sure. at certain points. But it's, it's, there, it, it's sort of a boiling point where you're waiting for that adjudication period, which can be quite long in some instances, and you're trying to get yourself in the, in the right headspace for the next race as well. You're, you're trying to, yeah, exactly, keep that competitive mindset. You see a lot of drivers, especially younger drivers, the emotion and the pressure can get to them uh, in a live event. It's something that can, um, that can affect your ability to compete. Um, I think as you get more experienced, you know, Lage is a very experienced driver at, at LAN events, uh, you are able to tune that out a little bit, and maybe get onto a frequency where there isn't so much noise, you know, manage to just have <laughs> yourself in the right place throughout the whole event. Is that right, though? I mean, are you able to sort of tune it out in that moment, or are you, is the noise yeah. and the lights part of the <laughs> thing, thing you have to deal with? Well, I mean, there was more noise... Um, well, during the actual race than between races. So it's, well, it's easy to, to get in your own world. I mean, basically, I keep my headset on my head. I just try to not listening at what Ali is saying. <laughs> <laughs> just like, cause it None of can, us listen can, to what can, Ali is saying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you're at home. You have, uh, you've, you've completed a successful 2018 campaign. What are you doing with yourself these days? Are you playing Forza, or are you just kind of putting it behind you and taking a break? Um, just taking a break. Yeah. No, I need to relax a bit. Um, I mean, it's been a really long season. So, yeah, just relaxing. Just relaxing, getting ready for whatever's next. Yeah, exactly. Make, making it rain. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, it might be a rude question, but I have to ask, do you have plans for your, for your winnings? Do, or have you just kind of put it in the bank and, and let it build? Well, I put it in the bank. Yeah. And uh, then when I have, whenever I need some money, I just spend it. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Fantastic. Um, well, it's been, a, it's been a fantastic season. Congratulations. Ali, you're... Um, what a, what a season it's been. The, w w there's so many storylines that we've had this season that are I think we'll remember for a long time. And what I love about this season is that, I mean, we've got Lage here, and he's the, you know, the big winner overall from the championship, but there are so many other people who won in different ways. People who didn't expect to make it to the world finals, who made it. People who maybe didn't expect even to be racing at this level, mm. who were in the Wednesday showdowns or got themselves represented out there. You know, Teams have come and gone, and, and new ones have arisen. <laughs> yeah. it's, been a, it's been a long old journey uh, over the last few months. So it's been yeah, very exciting to see all that stuff happening. Leish, who's a driver that, that, that surprised you, that you were really impressed with? I mean, obviously you have your immediate competitors, mm. but is there a driver out there that you're really looking at is who's going to be a, a force to be reckoned with in the future? Well, I think the one who impressed me the more was Mitch, mm. because he really came out of the way. I, I haven't heard of his name before the fourth RC, and he came third, which is impressive. He bet, bet some really big names. Um, so, yeah, he was impressive. And Box as well, because I didn't, to be honest, I didn't expect him um, to, to be up there. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, I have to ask this as well. What does it feel like to be called? Because, you know, you've won multiple Forza Racing Championship titles. Mm. When people call you the greatest driver in Forza <laughs> history, what do you think? Well, it's cool. I mean, I... <laughs> I mean, I, I try to not paying that much attention attention to that because it can distract you for the next season. Mm. Um, but I still want to stay focused. So, but it's cool, definitely cool. I also get that question a lot. So yeah, it feels good. Uh, it it feels easy. really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course it does. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ali, thank you so much. Leish, congratulations again. Cheers. Well done in the 2018 season. Uh, thank you. That was fantastic. I, I, I had so much fun being part of the, the Forza RC. Look forward to the future. Uh, let's, let's take a look at where we are on the show. We still have our friends from Playground Games, and we're going to be talking some Forza Horizon 4 as well. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. But... Uh, Yes, we are going to talk about the route creator that just was put into Forza Horizon 4 uh, recently. We're going to be looking ahead to Series 3 a bit as well. 
Uh, I'll give you a sneak peek at what to expect in Forza Horizon with our friends from Playground Games in just a bit. But first, I mentioned at the top of the show, we were recently at the Specialty Equipment Manufacturers Association show. That's SEMA show in Las Vegas for short. And uh, we did a live stream with our friends at Hoonigan during uh, while we were there. John Iwana and co-pilot were there. And while they were there, they had a bunch of fun putting together this video from the SEMA show in Las Vegas. Check it out. So we're here at SEMA. We are. Look, look. It's cool. And we are <laughs> going to be riding in cars. We're going to be talking to Ken Block. Maybe we can talk somebody into letting us out there. So the whole like, Safari 911 thing is kind of a new thing that a lot of people are doing. You can see these are lifted a bit. We've got the tire rack on the, on yeah, the top. Of so this caught my eye. I also recognize it from a lot of competition reward requests. Look at that thing. I mean, it's nicely lifted. Is it taller than me? Uh, almost. You know me, love me some Volkswagen. We are here at the Ford booth at SEMA with Greg and Nick, and we are going to be talking about the return of the Ranger in this awesome livery. The whole wrap's inspired from the Xbox Design Lab, which recently launched two new designs. This is actually the camo, uh, brace, basically a recreation of it. Greg, you want to take me around this thing and show this thing off? Absolutely, let's check it out. So we started off with the Ranger XLT package. This thing's got Xbox One X inside. Yeah. Let's see how clean you've got that look. Check this out, bro. Two consoles <laughs> right here behind the seat, mounted up nice so you can drive around with them and use them while you're running. Man, that is like so next level. It has a built-in Wi-Fi system inside the navigation console <laughs> with its own Wi-Fi broadcast so you can actually remote play online. This is the new KM3. It's got all the green accent stuff. So we wanted it to look badass. In the back, we did a custom tire carrier. You'll see the Xbox Nexus right up on top of the tire. That's one of my favorite things about Forza is the ability to customize and yeah. I can you know, make it my personality instead of what everybody else wants. Yeah, so I seem to have had a problem with my clutch there and it wouldn't disengage and that's what happened, so. Looks like I broke my car just for you guys! Yeah. How, uh, how was your first FD crash? That hurt. <laughs> Oh hey, my god, let's go again. Ken Block, what's up, man? Enjoying the SEMA show. You brought something kind of special. Yes, <laughs> this one is extra special. Well, this is what we call the hero vehicle. The hero vehicle, <laughs> sweet. So there's five vehicles in Jim Connor 10, okay. uh, and this is the final boss. This is a 77 Ford F-150. This is a, a tube frame. Well, built. the back is tube frame. I mean, this is the original shell. This is the real, uh, but, the real it, but it is a race car, though. And there's there's a lot of very cool parts in here, from a you know rally bread uh, drivetrain and diffs to a Ford Performance engine that actually was one of the engines in the Daytona prototypes. So when they were designing this, they were giving us some really wild designs, and and basically they were making us think so far outside the box of things you could do because yeah. because this mesh that's in here, you can, can't mill that, you can't cast that. The only way to make that is by 3D printing it.
All right, here at the Hot Wheels booth, finalist cars everywhere. People gonna get a chance to be a real Hot Wheels. And around here, this is like, it's like the freak show of cars. It's it's, oh, it's a, beautiful. The superheroes of cars. I mean, just what you see here, it's like a perfect representation of what Hot Wheels is. It's a whole variety of different cars. I mean, some crazy creature cars yeah. to slammed big trucks to old school to dragsters to everything in between. The winner of the SEMA Hot Wheels Legends Tour is Luis Rodriguez and the two Jets. <laughs> Dude, your car is gonna be a real life Hot, Hot Wheels. How do you feel about that? Absolutely amped. And how, just how many hours roughly went into that? I, I work a full-time job, so it was every hour when I was available. I put a rush on it, so it was a year and a half of my time. Freaking amazing, congratulations, man. Uh, thank You're you living so much. the dream. <laughs> and <laughs> who knows, maybe someday that car will be in Forza. You know what, if it is in Forza, <laughs> I'll be absolutely ecstatic. I love the game, and if I could have the ability to play myself, I'm good. We'll see what we can do about that. <laughs> yeah, all right. I had fun. Did you have fun? I had a lot of fun. Some of this. Yeah! John Iwana, co-pilot, thank you so much for that. Looks like they had a great time at SEMA. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you missed the live stream that we did with Hoonigan, you can check that out right here on the Forza channel, whether you're watching on Mixer, Twitch, YouTube, what have you. It's there. Uh, those guys had a great time. It was great being with the Hoonigan folks as well and doing that live stream from Las Vegas. It's like a remote show. It was fantastic. Uh, I am so pleased to be welcoming Forza Horizon 4 to Forza Monthly and even better, we've got two of the folks on the Horizon team. We've got Mike Brown from Playground Games. Welcome, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's really, really great to be here. Yeah. Now, you are a game designer with Playground Games. Okay. Tell us about yourself, what do you, what you do with Playground. Yes, yeah, so I'm a uh, principal game designer at Playground Games, so in charge of uh, the larger design des decisions of, of the game, deciding what features we're going to do and stuff like that, and then taking those features down to how are they going to be implemented into the game and then down to actually tuning all the individual values of any given feature to make them as fun as possible. For and you've done some streaming yourself from the, yes, yeah, the from yeah. the office. Yeah, we've done a few streams <laughs> already from, from Playground Games. Yeah, we did one about 10 days ago, um, where, which is where we first showed the root creator. So we'll give it a... Give it another go in a sec, I think. Absolutely. And Bonnie, uh, a.k.a. Nitro Glitter. <laughs> Bonnie, you uh, obviously work at Terran 10, but you spent a lot of time in Forza Horizon 4. What do you do with Forza? So I am the community support engineer, and I take everyone in the community's issues, mm -hmm. and I try to get them fixed as quickly as possible. Well, that's a great job. Now, we're talking about uh, g issues in the game, not yes. necessarily emotional issues or things like that. <laughs> that's another system that we're still developing. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, works. welcome, Bonnie. It's great to have Thank you here. You. Uh, g let's talk about Forza Horizon 4. We're about a month or so into this game, Mike. Um, I, I can, I can uh, just imagine, we were talking before the show began about what the mood at Playground is like. It must be fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's been amazing. I think, I think buoyant would be an understatement. Um, yeah, since... since since launch, obviously, we've had really great critical reception, uh, really great reception from the fans, uh, and just the, the general success of the game has really blown us away. I think we had, um, we had reasonably high expectations, but it has exceeded those, and it's, it, it's, it's, it's really great how, how much people have been enjoying the game and how, how successful it's been so far. It's funny, I have to say that w when Mike and I were talking before the show began, uh, we were, I was asking him the same question just to get a feel for how you were feeling, and we were talking about what was the mood leading up to launch, and, and you guys, uh, as is any development house, you were feeling nervous you were feeling like well, I, are I we doing I, the right thing here yeah, I, I certainly was <laughs> I, I, I was apprehensive I think that um, that process you go through in the last few weeks of a game where you're closing out and getting all those last fixes in and you know in your head the things that you, you didn't have time to do mm. that you didn't have time to fix um, and it you've had sort of four weeks where all you've thought about is the things that aren't right, right, rather than the two years prior to that where you did all the stuff that is right, all the stuff that's in the game. So it's a, it's a weird mental state that you're in as the, uh, as the game comes up to ship. But then as soon as it, it's out and you have that, that reaction from the world, then it, it, it just turns around. And, it's, and so when you see that, when you see people saying, oh my God, greatest Forza game ever, greatest Horizon game ever, it, do you feel, uh, what's the feeling? Is it elation, relief, or like, oh, we've got a, a lot of work to do? Uh, well, I think we definitely do have a lot of work to do, and we'll, we'll touch on that a, a little later on. But no, there is a, it's, it's, it's definitely an elation, I think. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh, each, each time we do a game, and we've been really lucky in the, uh, in the Horizon series, where each game, I think, has been received better than the last. Mm. So each time we've, we've done a game, we've, we've learned a lot and be able to make a lot of improvements, and then made a game that each time it, it, it beats the previous one, which is a really great position to be in as a developer, I think, where you're just having win after win. 
what have you learned about the community since the game came out? What, in terms of what they like, what they don't like, what the kind of features that they're really sort of attracted to? What have you learned about the community so far? Uh, I've heard that they, that they don't like it when achievements don't unlock when they're supposed to. <laughs> I've uh, heard that my, as well. My, Bonnie my, knows my, that. My, my Twitter <laughs> inbox is testament to that. Um, <laughs> but I think, honestly, one of the great things that I've learned about uh, our community is actually how, how chill everyone mm. is, how cool everyone is. And I think, obviously, this is our first game where uh, it's a shared world game, so as you're driving around, your your world is populated with other real players. And that was something that we were nervous about because mm. that brings with it opportunity for people to not be very nice to each other. Mm. Uh, and, it, and honestly, it doesn't, from my experience at least, it doesn't feel like that way at all. It feels like when you're playing the game, it, people are... Are really the game fosters this party atmosphere, this party vibe where everyone's having a great time, everyone's having fun, uh, and you, there's loads of times where you see that where, like, wh when you've, you've got those barn fine circles on the map, and mm -hmm. you'll see you can see on the map someone's just like driving around inside it, and then you you'll, you'll see. Well, I've, I've watched other people got to go and use the quick chat, and be like follow me, right. and then they'll show them where the barn is, and someone actually did that to me to help me find one, which is a little embarrassing because I pr should probably know where they are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and you see it at, at Fox on Live event, so. Every hour when the Thoughts on Live event starts, we pull people together into groups, and you just you just with eleven random people off of the internet, and we people just have an absolute whale of a time. They're all getting on, they're all having a having a great time. Um, and I think that was a, a a big thing for me, where it's sure. like this is a this is a game where uh, people are just happy to be in it and they're nice to each other in it, which is a big win. Was there was there a feature that you were particularly I don't want to say worried about, but you didn't exactly know how it, how it would be received? Um, in, in terms of something brand new that you were like, this seems like a good idea, but is it going to be a good idea once it's unleashed on the world? Yeah, so Thoughts on Life is, is a great example of that, because it was something... And it was something that, there was things a bit like it in other games, but uh, I don't think exactly uh, like Thoughts on Live, where it right. keeps people all working collaboratively together, uh, being scheduled every hour on the hour. There was a few things about it where, we're like, yeah, this feels like it's, this is the right decision. And the, but it wasn't really until, until we had it in that you... Um, you sort of see that see that all coming together, um, and because we were thinking, right, it's gonna we'll have a thing on the map and we'll have a countdown. It's like I hope people turn up for it. Like, <laughs> is it like what's gonna happen if you get there and no one else turns up? Right. Um, and <laughs> the opposite has been the case. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Too many people. It's, well, um, actually, it's a great question because those values, the scores that you have to hit. I, I imagine those were place te tested to death. Are those going to be changing over time? We probably will update those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we will look to uh, get some user data and, and, tweak, and tweak those values in. Because we kind of like, well, what if only four people turn up? You don't want it to just be like a really disappointing experience when you're not able to do it. So the numbers are kind of balanced so that you could do it with a smaller number of players if, right. if you didn't get the full, t full 12 that can fit in a session. Um, so yeah, we, we, we probably will look to, to address those. Um, but it's funny, when you look at our, our charts, we have obviously charts which show how, how populated all of our servers are and all yeah. the game types are at any given yep. point. And, and every hour on the hour, basically every other type of multiplayer empties and there's this massive spike in, Is that in right? Portal on Live. It's, everyone's like leaving team adventure and leaving season events and, and all that stuff and everyone's just doing this one activity for the next sort of 10 to 15 minutes, which is it's great. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's what you wanted. Thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a, I I love the way everything connects in this game. It feels like you do those Forzathon lives to earn those Forzathon points, to go into the Forzathon shop where there's always cool stuff. That seems like a really um, fun loop, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's what a game designer would say. D yeah. Did you think <laughs> of that um, in the early goings as all of those things were connected or did, did one lead to the other? You, do you see what I'm getting at? Did you start with Forzathon Live or did you always have in mind, we're going to have this Forzathon shop where people are going to be er able to earn stuff and spend their, the points they earn? Has that all been holistic or individual? It was... It wasn't holistic. That okay. wasn't the sort of the, the grand idea at the start. Um, but it was still pretty early on when we started to piece together what these features were going to be. It was like these, there's a real natural kind of relationship yeah. between these features where they'll work really well together. So it wasn't that we set out to have that, that loop, that loop we yeah. call it. But once, once we started to have, even very, very late, just still on paper designs, it was like we knew that this was gonna, the, these were going to tie together and relate together in the way that they do in the final game. Well, we recently had the update, the Series 2 update for Forza Horizon mm -hmm. 4 yep. just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And there has been some major feature mm -hmm. uh, in the game. Uh, I, people might be wondering why I'm driving around this one particular section. I want to stay close to this because I actually want to create a route. If you haven't seen Route Creator before, we're going we're gonna to show it off today. Um, but before we get to Route Creator, let's talk about the Horizon stories because mm -hmm. I can imagine those are so fun to make. Oh yeah, they are. They are. They are really, really, really great fun. Um, 
they are maybe about as much fun to make as they are to play uh, <laughs> if I was getting in full salesmanship mode. Nice. Um, but no, I, I work quite closely with a lot of our actors and scriptwriter as well. Um, and there's a lot of really fun little bits of narrative and stuff in the, in the Horizon stories, which uh, as, as designers and as writers, it's really fun to play with and to try and give those characters fun things to talk about. The one we, um, that we released in series two, British Racing Green, uh, gives one of our characters, she is in the main game, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Rebecca, um, You'll see her quite often in the game, but uh, it's like, this is almost her other job. She right. works at the Horizon Festival, she runs the road racing series, um, but in our, in our universe, well, she's famous, she's a, a successful race driver, and so um, British Racing Green is sort of her other job. She also works for this documentary company and makes a, a sort of Top Gear style um, documentary series about British cars. Uh, it's a really good, fun way to um, expand on her character. Uh, and I think the actor who plays Rebecca, um, Ophelia Lovibond, I think her name is, um, did a really great job on it as well. Uh, it's, it's one of the things that's actually really difficult for us when we are casting actors. It's like, mm. yeah, you can, you can act, you can be this person, you can be at a festival. And it's like, but I need you to tell me about this car yeah, in a right. way that the, the guys in the, in the, the chat right the now. field a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, these guys in the chat need to believe that you really know what you're talking about, um, which is always a, a challenge which a lot of our actors fall short on because mm. it's just the way, the intonation on the way that you describe part, engine parts and things like that. Sure. Is a, there's a, a nuance to it that I think car people know about and get, which, um, which is a real challenge for an actor who perhaps isn't actually yeah. a car person. She, she is not actually a race driver, the actor who plays Rebecca, well, believe it or not. <laughs> but I, I imagine that's also, especially when we're talking about something like British Racing Green, it's got to be like a real passion project for you guys, considering where you're located, considering that we're set in Britain here. Mm -hmm. It feels like a natural thing. I imagine that added even more fun to the creation I mean, of the Yeah, the I think story. for us at Playground, that has been a story of so much of Forza Horizon 4, where it's you, you, ta you take on a feature, right, we're going to start with this, and it's mm -hmm. like you're almost... You're just looking out the window and going, okay. <laughs> it's like, um, and you're just driving around in, in real life and it's just constantly giving you inspiration for things that you can bring back into the game. Um, it's been, it has been a, a really great experience, I think, to be a designer on a project like that where it's set in the world in which you live. Um, and obviously, I'm, I drive cars, I'm a fan of cars. Sure. Um, and the, the experiences that I'm having in real life are then able to inspire me to create things in game. Um, it's funny, British Racing Green, um, uh, on the stream we did from Playground about 10 days ago, um, which would have introduced Torben, uh, one of our designers, to the mm -hmm. world first name. He's actually, uh, he's actually Danish, so he's, he's not British at all, <laughs> but, but, um, but did design that one. <laughs> yeah. he, um, but he, he, he wrote most of the script for that one and, and designed it and had a really great time doing it. So, uh, yeah. Well, uh, no, without giving too much away, I hope there's more Horizon stories Absolutely. to come. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have uh, many more ideas in the can. So, uh, yeah, watch this space because we'll have loads more oh, coming. Fantastic. The other big news from Series 2, of course, was the Route Creator. Mm -hmm. Now, Ralph introduced this before the game came out, that this was something that would be added after the game was launched. Here it is. Uh, you're, what has been the response for, for Route Creator from your point of view? Oh, it's, it's been incredible, I yeah. think. Um, it's, it sits alongside uh, tuning and livery creation as uh, just one of these great features which really allow our community to express themselves. Mm -hmm. And I guess a bit like we were talking earlier, it's one where you're like, you can never be 100% sure how it's going to go down, how right. people are going to react to it. Our, our people, obviously, the, our root designers on both on um, Forza Motorsport and on, on Horizon are extremely talented, experienced guys that take years and years and years to be able to create the races that people are driving. Yes. It's like, we kind of try to make a tool set that allows just anybody to, to try and do that and still have a satisfying experience at the end of it. Yeah. And I think with any of these yeah, UGC tools, you have the ability to make really, really bad race routes. <laughs> As I'll prove right now. <laughs> and you have the ability to make, like, in the same way that you can make a terrible paint for a car, um, you can make a terrible route. But I think some of the, uh, some of the work that guys have already been doing has been really, really incredible. I've seen uh, Don Juan Song in the chat there. Oh yeah, uh, and Forza Legend. <laughs> yeah, for, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, his his route uh, that snakes around the um, the abandoned rail yard is just absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, really, really. So really excited to see where people go. I think one of the one of the really great things for us as, as a developer with Root Creator is that. Um, once these routes are created, once they're uploaded to the server, it actually gives us quite a lot of ability to, to use those in other areas. Right. So we can then take those routes and add them into Team Adventure. We can create season events using them. Uh, players as well through, um, through private Team Adventure can, um, can create the route and then they can go into a private Team Adventure and they can already right now take that route and use it in, in a private Team Adventure if they want to do that. Um, I imagine that's probably a feature that not a lot of people do use, Private Team Adventure, but I would urge you, if you are watching this right now, to actually go and check it out, because it's got a, a really, really powerful tool set in there to create great stuff, and you can just find some guys on 
forum or Reddit or through Xbox LFG. Um, there's really good opportunity to have a, a really, really great time with that stuff and using all the routes that you've created. When I, when I first used Route Creator, I was surprised by, I, I don't know what I was imagining in my head, but I think I imagined something much more complex than this, mm -hmm. that, that maybe you would use in a different menu or something like that. But this is really, drive it, place the gates, and you're good to go. What, what is the iteration? Did you start there, or did we end up here? <laughs> so um, so there's, there's, been a, there's been a very, very long road to get in the, uh, the root creator in the game. Uh, I originally, um, so yeah, I originally pitched this as an idea. Well, not, not, not the, the version you see now. This is a, a much, much more um, less advanced iter uh, iteration of it, back on Forza Horizon 3. Ah. Um, and it, it just wound up being a, we just didn't have the time and the, the manpower in order to get it out because it is, despite the, the, the simplicity and the way you describe it, yeah, you just drive with this checkpoint. Right. It's a, an incredibly complicated feature. Sure. Um, because although, yes, you're right, that is what you do. You drive the car, you place the checkpoints, but then that needs to be saved out in a, in a format that can be uploaded to the server, that can be shared, that other people can download. And then you want, oh, we will need to have a rating system once we've done that. Yes, yeah, so we need to rate it. We need to be able to uh, create event restrictions to go with it, so car restrictions and that. All those yeah. other systems yeah, that yeah, surround the, it. Uh, yeah. The fact you want, the, you want to be able to use them in campaign, team adventure. We want to be able to have you, we want to be able to then put them into season events. Um, there's just so many features that it touches that when you actually start to itemize the amount of work required to make a feature like this, it. it it is quite quite breathtaking, <laughs> and um, and that's why you're I think, sweating just thinking about it. <laughs> and, uh, and that's why it's been such a long road, I think, to get in the game. Uh, and I'm I'm so excited that we've that we've got it here and, and that it's working in as well as well as it is. Well, you, um, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, just the, the the quality of the things that people are able to make. Um, you you asked about the the iterations and the complexity of it, and um, I think something that we wanted from this, and something I, I mentioned just a little earlier, is really good tools like. Give you, give, they give you uh, things that you can do, but you have to have the ability to be bad at it. Mm. I think that that's... That if, if we, if we, could, we could have given you write the map and you maybe map it out on the map in the yep. same way you've set a route, yep. and we, we could do a lot of the work for you. Right. Um, but I think, one, you'd lose freedom. You'd lose the ability to, to really create the thing that you're specifically trying to do. Mm. Like, you want to be able to... If you want to place a checkpoint that was sort of right in front of those two trees just in front of you now, um, yeah. this system allows you to do that. Um, and I think it struck a really great balance between... Um, complexity and 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 accessibility, mm. where you can do most of the stuff you'd probably want to be able to do in a root creator, um, but also anyone can use it. And um, I don't know how much we've been cutting between gameplay and us talking, but um, if people if people saw this, it's like it really was pretty pretty straightforward I think, yeah. for you to create this route. It was just. Uh, you drive it, you place the checkpoints, and away you go. And that's a, a route, the AI. The AI. And they we'll, know. We'll, we'll, see how, we'll see how well they <laughs> yeah, do. Yeah, that's the, right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, you mentioned that you've, you've seen some cool stuff from the community. You knew that they would be creating cool stuff. Mm -hmm. I've seen crazy stuff, like people creating the Nürburgring mm. uh, on, in the world of Horizon 4. I'm wondering if you, if you have a few examples of, of created routes that, you, that have kind of blown you away from the community. Yeah, so oh, I, I wish I'd, I'd prepped for this because I'd have had the people's gamer tags on hand. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, there's been, I think something we knew that people would create was uh, really, really long routes because yes. we know that our hardcore community are constantly asking us for really long routes. Yep. Um, and there's been one, I, th I, think I played one the other day that was twice the road length of, of our Goliath. Oh, wow. Which um, our Goliath, for those who don't know, uh, is like a round the world route. It's our longest uh, on disc route. And this one kind of went around the world, but at every opportunity cut inland as well. And it was like this massive zigzag wow. all the way around the world. And it's just like, but it feels like you've gone on such a journey at the end of it because I think it did, it was close to 40 miles or something like that. It's like, man, I've got, I have gone a long old way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be <laughs> testing this one for a while. But it's, uh, it's, and of course, it can lap around as well, so you can <laughs> just keep on going if you want. <laughs> Bonnie, I don't know how much time you've had with this, but do you have any favorites that you've played so far? I no. No. Uh, the Don Juan song one was one of the coolest that I had seen. Um, I haven't really had a chance to play because everyone keeps sending me love notes. <laughs> That's right. I'm faster than you, Nitro Glitter. Yeah. The. Um, yeah. You can get real cruel with this or gate placement, which I yeah, love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is fantastic. Um, well, uh, I'm not going to have a chance to finish this because I created a route that's too long, but I, Mike, we, we want to talk a little bit about stuff that's coming up. Yes, yes. Uh, we've, we're right in the middle of Series 2 with Forza Horizon 4, but Series 3 is right around the corner. That's right. Yeah. And we're actually, for the first time, going to look at uh, what's ahead in Series 3. 
uh, here for Forza Horizon 4. So let's bring up the graphic, and Mike, okay. maybe you can talk us through this. Yeah, so uh, last time I was on stream, which was uh, around about 10 days ago now, uh, we talked a lot about, yeah, hey, we're listening, we listen to all the problems that you guys are raising, we're, we're aware of this stuff, and we listed out a few of those things that um, we were, we were going to be working on, and uh, this update uh, is, uh, is the fruit of, of that, really. Mm. Um, so what we're calling the Horizon Service Check is something you'll probably start to see more of over the coming months and years. Um, what this is just our term for like a big a big drop of bug fixes and quality of life improvements. So it includes things like um, connectivity issues that people were having, um, which may, they maybe didn't know that they were having, but it could just take a little bit longer than normal to get into the game. Uh, sometimes sessions wouldn't be full. Like quite often we'd have sessions that were kind of sit about half full, which mm -hmm. just half the chance that you're going to be running into other people around the world. So that that'll all be getting fixed. Um, we've got big improvements to the post race. So. Uh, we have a really nice, beautiful post race, loads of cool animations and whip pans <laughs> and stuff, uh, which is really beautiful. First one, two, three, four, ten times you hear it, right. you see it, sorry. Uh, a thousand times, you, you know, you maybe, maybe you just want to be able to tap A and skip through that, so people will be glad to know that we're adding that. Issue, add, adding that. Um, something that a lot of people have asked for is uh, the ability to just add all my DLC cars to, to the garage. Ah, yes. Yeah, you, Love you've, that. Yeah. Yeah, you've, you've bought Car Pass, you've got however many cars are ready for Car Pass now, 16 or so. Um, no, it's not 16, it's not however, however many it it's is. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And if you had to go and add each of those cars to your garage, it took a really long time because you had to pick a paint and what have you. So now you can just add those, add those instantly. Um, and. Big, and, and also some of the stuff we talked about last time. So we've got fixes for that barn find achievement that people keep tweeting at me about. Um, <laughs> we've um, You're not Barney, alone. Barney You're not alone. <laughs> We're, we've got um, photo mode improvements. So I talked earlier about the, um, the the really fun people have at the start of Forts on Live, mm -hmm. and you have all people like lining up in formation and stuff in those events. And obviously the the thing you want to do then is take a photo with everyone right. lined up in their cool cars. And a a part of the problem was you'd enter photo mode and cars would be ghosted out because yes, yes. they're like intersecting with a fence post or something mm -hmm. like that. Um, and we've, we've fixed that now so that uh, in all those instances, unless you've got two cars actually inside each other, then they'll appear sol a solid as soon as you enter photo mode. Uh, we've also got a fix for uh, in Team Adventure. If your car gets stuck on its roof or wedged between two trees or something, uh, you, you couldn't reset its position. Uh, which, that's yeah, happened to me. <laughs> yeah, that was like that. Because that, you had an option to like reset car position. You'd, oh, I'll, I'll click that. It right. didn't do anything. So <laughs> <laughs> um, we fixed that issue now. And that's a good opportunity probably to talk a little bit more about Team Adventure. Uh, these fixes won't be in Series 3, mm. but uh, we are here in the community and that people aren't 100% happy with the current set for Team Adventure. Mm. And truth is that I don't think we are either. Uh, now that we've seen it, uh, seen, seen it out there in the wild, uh, we will be looking to bring an update uh, very, very soon mm. with um, what's going to be changing in Team Adventure. And we are going to be looking to revisit that design uh, going forward. Um, so as well as that, um, I don't know if you want to bring the yeah, graphic Yeah, let's bring the graphic. Well, um, there's more. Yep, so that was kind of all just like quality of life, bugs, but I know something that's going to be really exciting for people watching is the uh, painting and upgrade options. Oh, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so we've got I can hear chat cheering right now. <laughs> <laughs> so these are, this, uh, if ever you've tried to paint a Bugatti Veyron, one of the most popular cars in the game, and it has that classic sort of two-tone color, so it has the sort of dark blue on the top and the baby blue along the bottom. Um, as soon as you picked another color, it would just change the whole thing. Mm. So red, the whole thing's red. Uh, and it was actually really complicated if you want to just go and, all right, I want to keep, the two-tone thing, but with two different tones. It didn't really let you do that. Right. So now any car, well, I, don't know if, I don't want to say any car, al al almost any car okay. where it has uh, <laughs> multiple paints in it on its, uh, on its body, you'd be able to adjust those paints separately. Um, that, that same functionality will be getting added to uh, wheels as well. So mm -hmm. where you've got alloy wheels where they have like a two-tone coloring, you can change those colors separately, which we've not been able to do before. And we're adding, I think, 40 uh, new to horizon um, at rims as well, so there'll be a lot of new, new wheel options coming in um, as well in this update. And we have the Horizon Racing Cup. Again, nice. this is um, listening to feedback. We've uh, listened to a lot of what people were feeling about the season events and their current implementation. And this is a kind of a reaction to that. So it basically has a, a more for people to do. So it's mm. in order to win them or to do well in them, you want to be getting a really a specific car and having to upgrade it and stuff and makes it a little bit more challenging, a little bit, a little bit more difficult. And uh, off the back of that as well, we have um, some really, really big like credit prizes as well. So oh, nice. uh, yeah, so for taking part in those, I think it's, it's 3.6 million prize oh. pool. So get, get you close to getting that new house. Getting that uh, castle in Edinburgh. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're a quarter <laughs> of the way there at that point. Nice. <laughs> Uh, and of course, uh, a new seasons coming in, new content, yeah, new cars. Course. Yeah, yeah, new cars, new content, new thoughts, all that stuff that we uh, 
we do, we do every we do every week. We'll be we'll still be going going on. I think across this season season series two and series three, I think I hope people start to get a picture of uh, our, our sort of our commitment to updating mm. Forza Horizon now. Um, previously, we've had the game it ships as it is, and then we do we'll do our DLCs, and that's yep. kind of like done. Uh, we now have a really big team, a really like well resourced team that's just every day working on new features, new content, and bug fixes and quality of life improvements for those players that are in Forza Horizon Four to right me, now. To me, it's like it feels like there's more content than ever, but it's also being delivered in a way that's never been done in a, for, in a Forza game before. I mean, two cars a week for car pass mm -hmm. owners. New, the, obviously, the season's changing is a big part of that, but it's a, to, you tell me, but it sounds like it's kind of a fundamental shift for how you guys work and mm -hmm. deliver this content. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so people played Horizon 3 a lot. It was a game that people would log into really, really regularly. And we wanted to... We, wanted, we looked at, well, obviously, have all the stats on how people play, and we wanted to hit on that. So it's like, right, if you're playing one, two, no, two nights a week, maybe you have your Forza night where you and your buddies get online to play together, we want to target it so that every time you're doing that, the game's giving you something new. The mm. game will show you something you've not seen before um, because we want to build into that habit. So yeah, okay, fine. Friday night, it's Forza night, and then every time you log in, there'll be new stuff to do, new things to buy, new, new stuff given to you for free. If you're a car pass owner, you're getting those cars delivered every week as well. So it, we wanted the game to just feel like there was always fresh and generous. Yeah. There's always new stuff to do, so yeah. Well, we, we get, you get a sneak peek of Series 3, but Mike, uh, Series 3 coming fairly soon, right? Yeah, I think uh, th third week of the th this month, so like two, two weeks. And maybe another great stream from Playground? I I almost certainly. I yes. hope so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you, Mike. Uh, Bonnie, want to make sure that we get a chance to speak with you as well. Uh, we talked about um, we've made some big big time changes in how we support games like yes. Forza Horizon 4 this time around. Um, you're right on the forefront of that. Tell us about this new support site that we have. So it's support.forzamotorsport.net, and on that page, there's all different titles that all the Forza franchise titles on there. Mm -hmm. And you can go and look at all the different articles that we have per title. Um, if you don't find an article that is related to your issue, then mm -hmm. you can submit a ticket, and one of our customer advocates will answer the ticket and try to reproduce the issue. Yeah, because the goal is we want to uh, help people with their issues. It's not always about problems with the game. Maybe they right. don't know where something is in the exactly. game. Exactly. So tell us about the kind of articles they might find on support for Forza Horizon 4, for example. So there's an entire wheel guide that uh, Marco from Playground and Aaron Brooks and mm -hmm. John Knowles worked on. Um, it's, it's pretty extensive. I had to break it up into several parts because it was too long. <laughs> it was like long. a novel. <laughs> it was. It was. They sent it to me and I was like, okay, how do I break this up? Because no one's going to scroll down to the bottom. Um, but it's got like an introduction on how, you know, Horizon 3 and Motorsport 7... Um, the settings for the wheels are different mm -hmm. than Horizon 4. So it's, it's important to go in and make sure that you have a fresh wheel profile. Um, and then there's a whole article on the supported wheels, yep. well, the wheels that we support, um, and even some settings that work best for like the Logitech G920. Um, and then there's a whole FAQ yeah. with the most common questions that we have seen. And we're always uh, learning and growing with that, so when we start seeing a trend of tickets that come in, mm -hmm. then we'll get an answer for that and we'll update those articles. Yeah. So it really is a like a living website. It's not just a once we post it, it's done. We're always going in there. And the cool thing about the site is you can actually follow the articles. Mm. So whenever there's an update, you're notified. And uh, it's not just, it, we, I've seen release notes in there. It's all yes. different parts of yeah. the game are covered. We have a, a master known issues list that's constantly being updated. Um, even when we fix something, we'll change the font and the color so mm -hmm. you can see that it's fixed. Um, and then also the release notes. Anytime a content update comes out, I will go and post those on there so everybody can see. And, and we're really like, before, we would post it after the fact, mm -hmm. and we're really trying to post it before the fact because every time we did a content update, everyone was like, ooh, what's in this? What's in this? Right. And I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> I haven't posted it yet. So now that it's going out. Getting ahead of it a bit. Yeah. So um, let's say I, I go to support.fortunemotorsport.net. I look through the database. I don't find the answer that I'm looking for. What's my next step as a user? So every single title has an article that's titled not finding an article related to my issue. Got it. That you can go in there. And then any single article that you actually look at, if you scroll down to the bottom, it says, are you still having trouble? You can submit a ticket here. Mm -hmm. 
That will take you to a submit a request page where you can look at our drop down for all the different types of forms that we have. So we have everything from like crashing, DLC not working, um, even like a wheel mm -hmm. ticket that you want to submit. There, there's also suggestions and feedback and bug reports. Right. So if you find something that you may think is not correct, you can send us a ticket on that and we'll take a look. And those kind of things affect the kind of content that appear on the support page like you were saying. One other thing I think uh, people want to know is when you submit a ticket, when you ask a question of Bonnie and the team, they see it. They're looking at it. You guys are looking at everything we that comes in. at every single <laughs> ticket. Trust right. me. <laughs> But it's it's funny the way the way this works is uh, just to give a little insight for people is you guys are really focused on solving problems in the game Correct. so they tr you know we're we're obviously reading all the tickets that come in but really the focus for you guys is trying to get those things solved as quickly as possible right and also because we don't just want to make you guys feel like we're putting a bandaid on something mm -hmm. so sometimes we will spend extra time trying to reproduce an issue and get to the root of the cause because we want to make sure that it doesn't happen again right. Well, uh, there you go. There's your look at support.forcemotorsport.net. Go there if you're having any sort of issue with any Forza game, and uh, the team will do its best to make sure that you are fixed up as soon as possible. Mike uh, and Bonnie, what a pleasure to have you here. Uh, so great to have you here as our first Playground guest, and first time for you, Bonnie. I know. It's great to have you here. It's been absolutely great to be here. Thanks Hopefully very much for Hopefully we'll see you very soon again. Uh, there you go, guys. There's another episode, another edition of Forza Monthly in the bag. Thank you so much for being a part of the show, joining us. We'll, we'll, we will be back in December. We have more streams coming this week on the Forza channel, Forza Friday. John Awana is going to be here. Stargirl Racing is going to be doing streams as well. You don't want to miss that. So if you want to be connected with all the things we're doing on the Forza channel, make sure you subscribe on Twitch, on Mixer, on YouTube, wherever you like to watch this content. Thank you so much for being part of Forza monthly. We'll see you in December. Start your 14-day trial now.